Hello and good evening, this is Ruth Pozuelo from Curval.com and today I'm going to show you how to use Google services with Power BI, okay? So I am going to show you how to measure the distance between two points using Google Maps, more exactly using Google Maps Distance API. For that, you will need an API key. And I show you on Monday's video how to get that key. If you don't know how to do it, make sure you take that video first because you will not be able to do this exercise unless you have a key. Okay, so make sure you take that first and then you come here because I will show you step by step how to call the services. And for that, we're also going to use functions. And I've been requested to do another video about functions and how that works. So this is perfect video. We will do both things at the same time. Great. So without any more delay, let's begin. So here we are in the console for developers, for Google developers, where I have my API key. Again, if you don't know what this key is, you need to check my previous video. It's on the description box. So make sure you check that out. But with this key, we will be able to call the Google Maps Distance API. First of all, the first thing you should do when you're calling an API is to check the documentation. Uh, I will post a link also in the description box for how this uh, um, API works, but it is easier than it looks here. What you do is you have a URL. This is the URL for that API. Then you say which format you would like to have it, a JSON or XML. Power BI handle both. I will get JSON. And then you have to have a set of parameters. Where are those parameters? Well, here you have it. The required parameters are origin and destination and the key. And then there are optional parameters. And then this, the mode, the default is to driving. So if you don't specify it, anything will be driving. And then the language, in case you want to have other languages and so on and so forth. So you just come here and read where the options are for the API. Google is nice enough that they actually give us an example here. So the first thing you should do is you copy these, you paste it into here, and as you can see, the API key is not there. So you come in here, you paste the key, you copy, you paste the key, and you test that your API key works. If it works, you will see results like you see here. If it doesn't work, you will see the API key is invalid or you don't have enough access or you can have all kinds of errors. But um, as you can see, with the right API key, we get the result. Okay, so this is how we are going to build our URL for our example. We are going to use the following parameters, units. So here you can specify if it's imperial or metric, origins and destinations and key, they are mandatory. So this is from city to city, basically. And then the mode is where you can specify if you want driving, biking, cycling, you know, whatever you want. Okay. So this is how our example URL would look like. So we have the first part, which is to call the distance matrix API, we will have a JSON and then we will have units metric. We're going to have any metrics, origin, Stockholm, destination, Kiruna mode. We're going to drive there. Perhaps it's not a good idea. It's quite far, but we're going to drive. There is an adventure and here is our key. Okay. So now we're going to paste our URL into Google to see if it's working. Make sure you do that because Power BI will not give you error codes and you will you would just not know what the problem is. So take the URL that you want to uh, call the service with and try it on Google first. So let's do that. Okay, so I'm here. I go in there. I paste. And here we have it, destination, Kiruna, origin, origin, Stockholm. And then 
we have the kilometers and the du duration, okay? So it works beautifully. Now that we know it works, we are going to put it into Power BI. Okay, so here we are in Power BI and what we have is a simple table. We have uh, a table that says city and then a city without any special characters, latitude, longitude, the country, and then we have from city, so to from, and then exactly the same without special characters, latitude, longitude, country, and then I have concatenated the latitude and longitude from the origin and the destination. Okay, so we want to know what is the distance from Oviedo to Gijón, from Stockholm to Kiruna, from Bangalore to Mumbai. Great, awesome. So how do we do it? The easiest way, especially if you are a beginner, is to do like this. You go to home, new source, you go to web, because this is a web call, connect. You paste the same URL that you pasted in Chrome. OK. And now it called the Google Maps API. It did it like super fast. And then this is what you get. If you go in here without clicking on, you know, on the link to just click outside, you see what those lists contain. So this is the region, this is the destination, and this is what we want. So you click on it, convert it to a table. We expand. We expand to new rows. We expand again. We don't want the status. We just want the distance, we don't want the value and the duration, we don't want the value. The value, in case you wonder what that is, I mean, you can do the test yourself, but it is just the same thing without formatting. Okay, but we want it with formatting for now. So here is the distance and here we have the duration. Duration. Perfect. But now we hard coded in here the origin and the destination. And that is not what we want. What we want is a table that feeds to that URL the cities and the two city and from city. Okay? So for that, we are going to create a function. First, let's give this a better name. We're going to call it function Google Maps Distance API. I don't know if that is a good name, but a name. And now we have to create our function. And this is very simple. It looks more complicated than it is. So what we're going to do is the origin and the destination, we want that to be functions. We want to be able to feed that information to the HTTP, HTTP call, okay? So what we do here is we concatenate a function called origins, origin we call it, concatenate, and we remove our hard-coded one, and we do the same with the destination. So we call it destination, do like that, perfect. And we need to tell Power BI those things are functions. The first one is origin, and it is text. And the next one is destination, and it is, my god, I can write today, text. There you go. So, so now we sell it. Tell Power BI you have two parameters, origin and destination. They're both text and they should be put in after origin and after destination. Okay? And don't misspell anything because Power BI does not like that. Let's remove the T. Great. Now, Always, always test this thing to see if it works properly. Stockholm, Kiruna. 
and then invoke. Wonderful, okay? It's working perfectly. So we delete that. We don't need it anymore. So how do we do now? So we feed our column to CT and from CT to this function. Very easy. Add column. You have here invoke custom function. That's what we're going to do. You choose a function query. We just have one. So that's the one we want. Origin is to CT and destination is from city. There you have it. Easy, right? So now the parameter origin is whatever it is on this row and the destination is whatever it is whatever it is in this row. Okay? And it will do it row by row. So it will call the service three times. It's super fast. Beautiful. Now, as you can see, for the first Oviedo Gijón, it gives me nothing. And I think it is because there are more Oviedos than the one in Asturias, Spain. So we need to be able to be more specific. And for that, that's where I had the concatenate the latitude and longitude, because this is a specific point on Earth. It cannot be mistaken. So how do we do it? We go back to the invoke custom function and here we feed the latitude and longitude of the origin and destination. This is in the documentation, you can see it yourself. We expand and now because it knows exactly which cities we mean, it's able to give us a, um, a result. So it works absolutely perfectly, right? So now another thing you can do is you can uh, either, let me see if we go here, we have hard-coded the API key, not there, in here in our function. Here's our API key. You can have it like that. If you have different keys, you can actually use it as a parameter. I have it here as a parameter, just write it in. As I have on the uh, another example, you can download my file to see how I did that too, right? And then you can have parameters for a metric and mode. Again, download my Power BI file and you will see how I did it. It's very, very simple. So yeah, this is, this is it. You will be able to do this easily, I'm sure. On the next video, I will actually show you how to... Um, hide your API key, okay? So in case you are building these for people and you don't want them either to have their API key or your API key public, like I have it now, I'm going to show you how to actually store it in the credentials on your computer. So it's super cool. But I will do it on the next video. This is more like a beginner's video. I don't want to put that stuff in a beginner's video. So for today, we are actually done. Okay, so this is all for today. I really hope you liked the video and you find it useful. Useful. I really also hope that I managed to explain myself. I know these things are a little bit advanced for, for beginners, but they're absolutely doable, even if you're not a developer. So... If you liked the video, let me know by liking it or sharing it. Please, if you know anybody that will also enjoy the video, share it with them. If you have any comments, questions, suggestions about the video, let me know on the comment box or any of the social channels listed below. And uh, subscribe, I publish Power BI videos every week. So have a great, great evening. Bye.